right, and we're live with Frag Logic number 74. Um, KL is going to be joining us over his phone, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, guys. Haven't finished setting up in the new place yet? No. No. Um, then we're also going to have uh, two guests on the show tonight, uh, Rabbit Tricks and T-Squeeze. will be joining us later on in the show when we talk about COD and Hype Bus Station. Uh, someone's got an echo again. Who has the echo? That's rad. Can you mute and unmute? Uh, still echoing. Uh, still echoing. Test. Testing. Yeah, you still got an echo. Man. Uh, if you want to bail, I can edge control when we get there. Since it's the mute doing it. Alright, cool, thank you. Anyways, uh, weekend gaming. We can get started off on that. Wow, it's still echoing. Maybe? Who has the echo? No, wait, we're good now. Okay. <laughs> That's so weird. Alright, weekend gaming, did you play anything? Obviously, your setup sucks currently. Yeah, so I played Mario Kart and I played some. I played a uh, Brave Frontier, and uh, I played uh, some Fortnite. And we had a Fortnite event at uh, Epic Games Studio uh, this weekend. So that was uh, pretty much all. All I did. I actually played uh, some single player on, on Mario Kart to unlock some more uh, carts and and. Uh, um, some of the cosmetic things that go with the carts or whatever, colors and wheels and all that stuff, uh, and some new characters. And that's really it. I mean, that, was, that was all my, my weekend consisted of was, you know, uh, pretty busy with, with, uh, with uh, Fortnite stuff. <clears throat> we had um, a group out f from PAX that uh, came out to the event um, that we accommodated for Thursday, Friday. They left and then or maybe they left Saturday. So they came in Thursday night, Friday, Saturday they, they left. And then we had another group um, that was out, that was in kind of in the area local that came out to the event. It was, it was really fun. You know, met a lot of people, um, you know, talked with a lot of, of people that, you know, we know personally. And, um, you know, like Rob Ossie was out there. Uh, Gold Glove, his girlfriend Allie, Vern Notice, um, and then a couple people that we like have met a couple times, like in different gears events. Like, you know, they were kind of out at the studio separately from that other group that I j just mentioned on Saturday, just to play. So I mean, it was a, it was a really good time, um, just talking with people that are you know passionate about uh, Epic and you know what they're doing and you know. And I, I mentioned to you uh, earlier before the show, you know, talking with people that like watch the show regularly is is kind of strange. Uh, you know, you hear some people like, you know, when you guys are talking about such and such on frag logic, and it's like that comes up in a conversation. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so, you know, I think that's I think that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had a good time this weekend. Obviously, I'm just ready for all this moving stuff to be done so I can finally get you know settled and whatnot. Yeah, then you can play some games. Yeah, we we're just talking. Uh, Destiny bait is coming up really soon. Yep. Uh, so hopefully you get everything resolved by then. I think it'd be like the twenty something by the time it comes to Xbox. But you have PlayStation too, right? No, I didn't get my PlayStation. You haven't gotten it yet. Okay. Nope. No Man's Sky or Uncharted. The only way I'm gonna buy a PlayStation. Well, buy it. Uh, on my end, I played. There's still a weird echo. Maybe it is. Uh, it could be you actually, because you're on the phone. I could. It could be me. No, it's happening very infrequently. We're good. I'm just paranoid, I guess. Um, so anyways, I played some Dota 2, more Dota 2. Uh, International starts next week, um, the like group stage of it, essentially. And yep. then uh, a few weeks from now, I'll be in Seattle for the finals, so that'll be cool. Uh, uh, I also played, sorry, was it? I was going to say, for International, they are they stopping uh, Compendium? Not yet. Uh, it's still going. It's over 10 million now. 10 million, uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know, last time we updated. Uh but they, everyone hit the stretch goals. Like all the stretch goals are complete. It's at ten point two million currently. They uh they had that live rewind feature, dude. That's fucking boss. Being able to uh, 
rewind the play the match to wherever you want and then play it again. Just oh, like yeah. uh, it'd be like MLG's old video player. Yeah, I think except some other, it's live. Some other places in the game. too. That's yeah, nuts. it's live in the game. That's nuts. It'd be extra cool if they make it so you can actually rewind the commentary too, like when they attach a commentator to it. Like that'd be pretty nasty if all that yeah. were wound as well. I don't know if that's the case, but that'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, they're killing it. They actually released a bunch of compendium stuff, and they had weather effects as a stretch goal. So like, you can play the map while it's raining or snow or whatever. Uh, but they actually tried to gate them behind the compendium level, so like, you would have to drop an extra 40 bucks to get like rain. And everyone threw a fit, and they changed it in like 45 minutes. <laughs> so that wow. everyone got all the weather effects. Um, besides that, I also played, believe it or not, I tried out the World of Tanks iPhone game. Uh, it's called is World it, of Tanks Blitz. Is it a snore fest? I mean, Blitz makes it sound like it's not a snore fest. It's literally like their desktop game in a phone. Oh. I don't know how really? they managed it, man. But again, like, my phone is struggling again. I, there's issues with my phone. It's just old and just worn out. Just go get an upgrade. Yeah, just upgrade it I'm by going now. to. I'm going to. But World of Tanks isn't going to be the reason that I do it. <laughs> I, play, I play like two games. I mean, it's like it's on it's on a phone, so obviously there's some very generous auto aim and stuff, um, and like those kind of mechanics. But for the most right. part, like you drive your tank, and it makes sense because the pace of World of Tanks is so snail like. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of works, you know what I mean? In that sense, right. I imagine it'd be a lot more fun to play on an iPad. Like, it'd actually probably be a pretty legit iPad game. I I mean, I can download it, but that's like ah. Uh... <laughs> I just don't know if I could do it. And it's free, like, obviously. And you actually, I think you carry over your unlocks from the desktop game. So, like, if you're a big World of Tanks player and you have your tier 10s or whatever, you can get them on the other game, I believe. That was right. the impression I got. I had to log into my account for them. But I hadn't unlocked anything, so I don't know. Pretty <sighs> cool. Uh, I'll consider it. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, it's not like I'll be playing anything anyway, so yeah, I might as well try it. Right. Uh, besides that, I watched a lot of streams this weekend. I watched uh, Hypha Station pretty much on and off all weekend, especially I watched all the way to the finals, which finished at freaking 5.30 a.m., so we'll <laughs> we'll get to that shortly. Oh, shit. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you knew what time they finished. No, I didn't. I, I mean, I watched a little bit on Sunday, but, dude, I was just so tired from uh, yeah. the Fortnite event. I was asleep most of Sunday. Like, I popped in there for a little bit, and uh, my only story is, like, people cont- – well, it's, like, one or two people, but, like, <laughs> people talking about fucking judgment in the chat. I think it was, like, one You're dude. just one dude copy-pasting so, over and over. He's trolling. Yeah, it was, just, it was just funny to see those dudes like that. Uh, but everybody else seemed, like, really positive. Um uh, you know, was, I guess Gold Glove and, and Like Butter uh, were in the chat. Yeah. Uh, like Butter was just feeding trolls, dude. Just feeding them. <laughs> I think a lot of them were people that he added to chat through tweeting and stuff. So it was his trolls. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just changes things. I also watched uh, ESL 1 was the big Dota event over the weekend. Uh, it's the last like major Dota event before the International. So it was a big kind of like practice run. Um, okay. And IG actually won. Um, they're like the they're Chinese team, and they're probably like, I'd say most people consider them like the third best Chinese team. So for them to come out and win was pretty huge. Uh, it seems like every week there's a different unbeatable team going into the international. So it's going to be pretty crazy. And then uh, EG got second. So uh, US Dota coming in big. Yeah. And they've actually been, they're probably a top five team right now. And yeah, that's good to hear. So it'll be interesting to see an actual American team instead of an adopted American team like Navi always is. Uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> at the international. Uh, and then the last one was uh, the Summer Games Done Quick stream, uh, the speed run for charity we were talking about last week. Uh, you know, there was a lot of people actually, uh, a lot of uh, major gaming publications that were talking about the different speed runs that were going on. As a matter of fact, I saw one for uh, Fallout. Somebody um, finished, I think it was Fallout 3 in 23 minutes and 55 seconds. Yeah. Nuts. That's crazy. <laughs> My favorite of the races, though. Obviously, it's like the competitive person in me like seeing all the races. Uh, even right. When, even when they're not being done seriously. So that's mostly what I caught was those. Uh, 
anyways, uh, I think that about does it for weekend gaming. So we're going to talk about, on the show tonight, uh, I want to talk about the MLG Call of Duty structure announcements. Uh, they announced their kind of rules and regulations for the Season 3. Uh, then we'll talk about Hype Station 3. Uh, I watched quite a bit of the event, and then we're going to have uh, Rabbit Tricks, who I think was in there pretty much the entire time. Uh, yeah. Also kind of give his two cents, uh, as well as the fallout after the event. Uh, and then also we'll talk about Evo 2014, their registration closed, and they announced how many players they have. Uh, and it will probably surprise you uh, if you don't follow the scene. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into Call of Duty. Uh, let me change the topic real quick. So joining us for this, I've got uh, Tyler Pastorius, also known as T Squeeze on Twitter. Uh, he's a Call of Duty player, and obviously, like Kale and I both don't play Call of Duty, so. I wanted to bring someone in that can add some perspective to it. Uh, so, welcome to the show. What's going on, guys? What's up? How's it going? Uh, of course, I don't have the setup to have the camera up, so just be a voice coming from the ether. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, first, I want to talk about... Let me link the post in chat. And again, I know that like not everyone plays Call of Duty, but the direction MLG is going here is very interesting from a... Like, this is where esports might end up going kind of uh, direction. And they're also doing something that's different from most other leagues currently. Uh, so I wanted to kind of call attention to it. Uh, if you take a look, I put the thing in chat. Uh, you can go ahead and read, but the basically gist of it is that there'll be 12 teams. And they're kind of like separate organizations, similar to how basketball would have 20-something organizations. can't remember how many teams there are. Um, and then they aren't like... It aren't, isn't necessarily the players on the teams. It's actually a separate team owner in most cases, I believe. And then they have very strict roster rules for how people move between those teams and then doing drafts and that kind of stuff. So you can read the thing for all of the details. Um, the few bits that I wanted to call out were the fact that teams can just outright release a player. They can just release one player from their team. Um, that player then can either sign on another team or at the end of the signing period, he basically can pick any team that doesn't have four players and join it. Uh, he's given that option or he can go into the draft, uh, and hope to get drafted on one of the teams as a sub because each team has to draft four substitute players for a total roster size of eight. Uh, and then after all that is said and done, uh, they'll play out the season, and then the current expectation is that next year, when they get to Anaheim, so this is for the entire season, these 12 teams are the only ones competing. Uh, and then at the end of the year, they'll do Anaheim for the championships. The top eight teams will be in the championships. The top four teams will have to play through open bracket to try and get spots in season four. Um, that's how it was done this year, and that's what the current expectation is for next year, although they're considering adding other teams. Uh, is that all right, Tyler? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, the the structure is really interesting, how they're doing it, like like you said, with the free agents and everything. Because, like you said, they're really taking a, like, an NBA or NFL standpoint type of it, like, type of stab at it, you could say. And, I mean, like, recently, I mean, obviously, if you guys don't follow it, you probably didn't see it, but all the, quote-unquote, transactions that happen between the teams, whether they're releasing a player or signing a player, it all has to go through MLG now also. Yep, they have to prove everything. Yeah, so there's a lot of things like when this first happened, it was probably either the day of or the day before all these rules got announced, uh, one team released two players. And in the according to the rules, you can't really do that. So there's this big controversy of the team had to release one person and then the other one has to declare free agency. So there's a big controversy on what they're doing for that. Um, I mean, they got it settled out, but, uh, I mean, you could see how it can conflict interests if that player doesn't want to get dropped. And he can, re he, I mean, yeah. he could screw over the team, but the team could also almost in a way screw him over and say, well, if you're not doing that, we're just going to put you on the bench and then just get someone through the free agency period. Yeah, as far as I can tell, the players have no real protection during any of this. Um, the only kind of consolation they have is that at the end of the thing, if there's a team that doesn't have four people, he can join them. 
Um, but that team could be some shitty team. Obviously, they're all good teams, but you can get demoted pretty heavily in this case. Um, right. Or you could, like you said, be forced into free agency. Um, as well as, because the draft order is already predetermined, you can have teams that will, like you said, force someone into free agency and then drop the other one. And then right. just draft him first with the very first pick. Um, yeah. So you essentially get an extra roster exchange out of it. Right. Yeah, because yeah, it... Oh, go ahead, Kale. I was going to say this. I mean, just from the how that the structure sounds. I mean, this sounds like a mess, like it's <laughs> like a disaster waiting to happen. And I'm trying to figure out why they kind of have come to this conclusion that this is the way to go. Um, and the only reason, uh, like the the only conclusion that I can come to for their reasoning is basically like, you know, MLG TV is is driving a lot of um, probably a lot of ad revenue or whatever type of revenue from this very select core group of people that they have there. So I think they're banking, banking on um, viewership interest uh, kind of around top players peaking their, um, um, you know, I guess exclusivity of, of having those guys and only having that limited number. That's the only way that makes sense to me to have 12 teams be able to, to to be locked into a year without anyone else competing in it. It's like, what the hell are AMs going to be doing in that right. time period? Which is like, why I don't... It, it really becomes a walled city, essentially. Like, you're practicing for one shot at Anaheim the next year right. in order to have a chance to win, or in order to get a right. chance to get in and actually get some money out of it and uh, compete for prize money. I actually wanted to read a tweet from Aix, uh, who is a player on EG. Um, they've had a lot of issues with MLG TV in the past and like being forced to stream over there. Uh, so right. they've been very vocal in their <laughs> distaste for MLG and like how they're structuring things. But they're also the best team, so it's kind of like MLG yeah, has to live with it, you know. Um, but yeah, it's exactly. Uh, they have to obviously with EG, they're pretty tied into streaming on Twitch and being very heavily involved in Twitch to keep EG sponsors happy. So I put the link in chat. I'm going to go ahead and read this whole thing. It's really long, so uh, bear with me. This is all EG aches. He said, Honestly, I don't even care about these new rules or regulations. None of that matters to me or matters at all, honestly. This whole system slash league is stupid and flawed and shouldn't be here in the first place. From the first one to now. It was created and its sole purpose was to ensure guaranteeing content hours exclusively, shocker in parentheses, to MLG.TV. That's it. We're now disguising growth for COD Esports as growth for MLG. Honestly, it's turning COD into something really lame in general, and especially for those not turning a profit and thus forcing a lack of live events. Which is all we care about anyway, is live events, because online blows, online COD blows and is no fun to anyone. These leagues suck regardless, but they're very cost-efficient, so yay for MLG. The worst part is we're being forced to play in them, AMs and pros, because there's nothing else right now. And to see pro-level players forced to sub and bench players for other teams is honestly disgusting. I miss real events. Not 8 or 11 team invite only brackets where not 11 or 8 team invite only brackets with either no prize or a guaranteed minimum payout to last place. 196 teams competed for a spot at season 3 this past weekend and we were competing for a cash prize that was the equivalent to dead last in the pro bracket. That's truly sad and I feel bad for that's how it is. Everyone have a nice night. Patty Poo out. <laughs> yeah, that's woof. And that's I mean, what the core of it like man, those open bracket teams are competing for jack shit. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's jack shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, it, go ahead. So, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, because, I mean, it, it really is interesting, because, like they said, it they are really pushing the markability, pretty much, of MLG and trying to get, like you said, those 12 teams and push that that those 12 teams and get the viewership from, like, Optic, NB, EG, and all the top teams. I mean, it's really interesting how they're doing that. And, I mean, for the amateurs, it's, like you said, you have to play so much and hopefully place top four just to get a shot into the next season. And you have to manage to place top four while not playing against the top eight teams in the right. uh, in the world. Right. You know, like, that's really freaking difficult. And then you have to deal with top players for those teams being drafted as substitutes <laughs> to ride yeah. the bench for these pro teams. Which really means they're not going to do shit. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, they're not going to do anything. They might yeah. get into some scrims and stuff, but for the most part, they're just fodder. Um, so, it all around leads to, I think, less community involvement over time. And it's going to be really difficult for the community to grow when there's no kind of, like, uh, drippings or leftovers for the AM, AM scene. 
Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's something where possibly down the road, if they change a few of the rules, I mean, they could probably improve it, I think, definitely. Because, I mean, like I said, there there are loopholes in it. Like I said with the earlier situation of, you know, they have to drop one player and then the other one has to declare free agency. I mean, there's a lot of loopholes in what people can do to work around it. But at the same time, I think if MLG changes a few things, you know, like probably adding a few more spots and just sim- like adding simpler things to it, it would make it a lot better, especially for the open bracket teams to get that shot. I, I think my biggest issue is is not really – I mean, it, the team thing is definitely a, a, a very, very big impact, like number of teams. But I have a really big problem with uh, – Colin just touched, grazed on it with player representation in this. is just so shitty. So here, here's like a scenario, right? You are um, uh, one of the top AM players uh, out there. Like, you know, all the pro players know who you are. You've been killing it on the AM scene or whatever, and you get a spot on the team. Um, let's say, you know, you're, you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing. Oh, then you have one bad tournament, and then all of a sudden they boot your ass out, right? Because they're this little, right. like, they're this wall garden of, of all these dudes – um, are all friends? They all hang around each other. They've all been on at some point in each other, uh, at some point in time, like on each other's teams, off of each other's teams. So it's a real tight knit group, right? Right. This person that's at the top am gets booted off. He can't do shit at this point. It's you know MLG is 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 the the body that is governing it, running the league and dictating everything to these teams. So it's like they're going to do what's in their best interest. So if if <clears throat> Joe Schmo top and player gets booted from a team and Nate shot wants to hop in and on, on your spot and MLG is the one that says okay um what's the right thing to do right here oh wait we need money right now we're gonna get Nate shot on this team right, right? like that's that's yeah. the scenario that I see in my head like what the fuck are they thinking yeah. there's players screwing over other players because they can take you onto your team like if you get dropped and then you join a team that has three players like that's one of your rights is to join a team that has a roster spot they don't have to play you. <laughs> like right. they have four subs, they can just swap you out into the bench, and then you can you know, do whatever until they finally get to release you. So like, like, it's so shitty. And like, the reason this works in the NBA and NFL and all those other leagues is there's very strict contracts and minimums and um, right. termination clauses, and like, there's a huge structure built around making sure that players don't get screwed by the league or vice versa. Uh, like, there's lots of protections in place. In this case, players aren't making anything unless their team that they're on happens to pay them a contract, which isn't governed by MLG in any way, um, or if they are winning prizes, which, again, and, is really, like, if you're getting, like, the lower end of the prize pool in MLG, you're not making enough to do shit. Right. And and some of those teams, I mean, you know, if you're, like, that 10, 11, 12 spot, like, you don't even have the, the organization representation from a team standpoint to uh, rely on like a contract for the team to to guarantee uh, prize money, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I I just don't understand how they've come to this conclusion uh, that this is the best structure to go with for them as an organization. Again, I understand MLG TV, but this whole like NBA league shit, like no, it doesn't work like that. I'm sorry, like gaming is not is not NBA. It's not. <laughs> It's not right. the NFL. It's not baseball. It doesn't follow the same rules. So trying to wrap it around that doesn't make sense at all. At the end of the day, it's kids. It's kids. It's kids. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the biggest it's thing. It's kids like, who have no money to travel the in the day, first place in order to, and spending all their time, all their free time. Yeah. I, at the end of the day, I have a major problem with, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, I have a major, major problem with MLG. And I'll directly call out Sonny. Like, he's exploiting at this point, like, the fact that there are young kids in the league right now that are 14, 15, 16 years old that are making him money. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, like, that's what it is. And the team, some of those teams are too. So this this whole structure is shitty. Like, bottom line, flat out. No questions about it. Like, it is shitty. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> Just <laughs> flat out. There's there's no no way around it. Like, it's, it's for some reason... Like, I get this vague, like, remembrance of, like, CGS being similarly structured, and they fucking flopped. Like, you know, I don't think MLG is going to have that same um, 
type of, of, of results because they've been around for so long. And I think they can quickly turn the switch on. But, like, I feel like uh, CGS had a very similar structure. And it just didn't work because this doesn't work for gaming. It, like, it doesn't work. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I mean, that's something, too, to kind of piggyback off of what Colin said a little bit earlier was this actually happened, I think, today or yesterday. You know, one of these kids got dropped off a team that qualified and that was already in season two, I think it is. So it's going to be season three for this season. And, you know, he was on one of the lower tier teams, but he's still qualified. And, you know, he got dropped or he left one of the two. And so he's put into the free agency period. And he had this team that he had in mind to join. And one of the guy, one of the teams that are ahead of him said, well, we're just going to pick you up and just put you on the bench pretty much. Yeah. And just mess up the, like, the other team. So, I mean, it's really interesting to see how some of these teams are going to, like, use these mind games pretty much and really screw over some of these players and teams with things like that. At the end of the day, you have a player who legitimately qualified. He went through all that work. Right now, like I said, it's ridiculous to even get in. You'd have to get top four at Anaheim at your one tournament a year that you can qualify for season the next season. So you do all that work to get in, and then you can just get dropped and forced into a bench situation and fucked, essentially. Yeah. And even if you were the team owner, like if you weren't, if you're a team owner but weren't the corporate owner, like if you were the team leader um, but weren't designated as the team owner by MLG, then you don't actually have any vesting in the team whatsoever um, right the team the team owner just runs everything like a nba manager or gm might do yeah and i mean that's a good point too because one of the teams uh they had two teams and they were both qualified and then the the team owner decided okay well we only want one team now so four of those players you know the captain of that team he went into free agency automatically i mean he got picked up eventually but so there's this empty spot, and then it was just, okay, whoever's the highest bidder for this team spot will pay that team owner for that spot. So now that team, you know, they don't have any players on it at all. So now it's all, they have to get their entire team through free agency, pretty much. So it's really interesting how to see how some of this stuff is going to play out down the line. Yeah. I, I really am not a fan. To their credit, they did post on the COD Competitive Reddit shortly after and like asked, hey, how would you guys run this kind of thing? Right. Um, don't know if anything's going to happen <laughs> to come from that, but it was thrown out there. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting. I mean, like I said, there's definitely things they can do to improve it if they want to keep this the entire structure behind it. So, I mean, it's gonna, I think it's going to be something where unless the season, like they're going to have to make changes before the season starts. If not, they're gonna have to change a lot by the time the next like season four starts. Yeah, because you can't change that stuff mid season. It would right. just be favoring left and right. Yeah, and I mean, I think that was something that kind of screwed over some of these teams right now, is that they had these rules, but they didn't tell anyone yet until like a day before a lot, like or day after, like all the team changes started happening. And, you know, anyone that's in the competitive scene of any game on Xbox really knew that, you know, after an event, there's all these team changes that happen. So all that happens, and then they decide to come out, well, hey, this is the rules and the structure for everything. And then it just causes an entire mayhem behind the scenes of, okay, well, what's this team going to do? What are we going to do? I mean, it's really going to be interesting to see what happens. Have they said how long the seasons will be? Uh, not yet. I mean, I keep saying a year, but that's probably not the case. No, I was gonna say because looking at it, it was pretty. I mean, there's been two seasons now, and I mean, they both lasted pretty much about two and a half months okay. around that time period. So I, I would assume it's something around that again. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm very vocally not a fan, <laughs> particularly because the players get screwed over in the end, which is like yeah. the. People with the least power in these situations, despite the fact that they're kind of the backbone of the entire thing, uh, which is pretty unfortunate. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing, too, where it goes back to MLG, where it's like, like you guys said, they are pushing their platform. And at the same time, it's like, like you said, none of these players have anywhere else to go because MLG, in a way, almost bought out the entire Call of Duty scene. Because all these tournaments like UMG, you know, like small other land 
companies, they all have to, if they want to stream it, it has to all go through MLG TV. Has that been confirmed uh, ever? Yeah. I, I know it's suspected, but has it been confirmed? Yeah, it was well, a while back ago. I mean, it wasn't because I remember there was one UMG event where it was like their stream got shut off, but that wasn't the reason. But it was like shortly after that they confirmed it, and like every pretty much every tournament is run not run through, but is streamed on MLG TV. Mm, okay. Yeah, and so I mean, they they try to compensate it by like, okay, well, you'll get pro point like they'll add pro points into their the other tournaments to make it right. seem like. You're getting you're getting something out of it rather than if you place well at that small land. But really, you're just building MLG's brand essentially. Right. Yeah, it sounds like it's just. Still... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> I was gonna say, it sounds like they're um, trying to protect themselves against like League and um, uh, Dota, like. The way Valve and, and Riot have kind of structured their stuff, like <laughs> they don't want to become obsolete because de developers are rising up to, oh hey, we can just run this ourselves. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean it does but seem like, like they're that. trying to do. Yeah, I mean that's something too. Whereas like obviously a, a lot of people know, I mean games tend to not do well if there's no developer support, and that was something with this Call of Duty is like they had an all right showing of interest like in supporting competitive side of things but it's like at the end of the day the game wasn't that great and they didn't really support it fully where as you look at like the last call of duty they had a big support behind it patches came out frequently and then like this next call of duty that comes out in november they've already showed multiple interests in competitive gaming i mean they've flown out players I mean, that doesn't really mean much at the end of the day unless they actually change things. But, I mean, it, it's really interesting to see what the developers do. And like you said, if, you know, tournaments, if they hold their own, quote-unquote, leagues and tournaments through it. Yeah, it's always the wild card with COD is, like, with all this structure around the teams and rosters and registration, um, it is a bit funny because when Advanced Warfare comes out, or yeah, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when that comes out, it uh, could shake up everything as far as like who's actually good. Oh yeah, yeah. Like th that opportunity is gone for open players because by the time they get that window to qualify, like the other teams will have caught up because it's like top teams playing against each other for top for money. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. They can do full time and everything, so it really, really, really protects them um, from what would otherwise be a chance for amateurs to get open or yeah. amateurs to get out of open. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point, because, I mean, that was something like Columbus last year. It, you you had about a week to play, well, a week or two weeks to play Ghost. So, I mean, when it came down to Columbus, there was a lot of these teams that showed up and beat some of these top teams. And a lot of players got noticed because of that. So, I mean, it, like you said, it's going to be really interesting to see when Advanced Warfare comes out, you know, how are these new players going to get to, quote-unquote, get noticed. Get a chance, even. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, well, Titanfall guys, Two is gonna be interesting. Titanfall Two. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm um, going to close this up and go to hype. Unless you guys have any last words. I mean, I think that that pretty much covers it. I mean, like I said, it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the structure overall down the road, more than anything. Because I mean, like, I mean, you can just take a poll on Twitter. The majority of people don't agree with the way how it's set up. Yeah. And it sounds like they did talk to a lot of uh, people at Anaheim um, as far as, like, from the pro teams and representatives about the roster stuff. And apparently there's also, like, a pro player forum vote thing going on right now for changes. So I yeah. would be surprised if it wasn't changed in some way. But I think that pretty drastic change would have to happen. And they've already committed to it and, like, restricted rosters based around it. So it's really difficult for them to make those changes appropriately. Right. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing, too, where... You know, if you look at the tournament, like the tournament weekend for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you only have 12 teams. So there's a lot of downtime in between the matches. I mean, and even just from a normal MLG tournament, there's a lot of downtime already. So with only 12 teams, it's very, there's a lot more downtime than what there normally is. So I think they would have to take that into consideration and want to improve it. Yeah. 
All right, good. And wrap it up. Uh, thanks for joining us, talking about it. It was very nice to get some insight as far as team changes and that kind of stuff. Because again, I don't follow it. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Um. And switch into hype festation three. And I'll go ahead and add rabbit. Hello? Yo. Hey, how's it going? No echo? Yeah, we're good. Alright. Alright, so over the weekend there was a... <laughs> over the weekend there was a Gears of War event. Um, actually, that's kind of strange to say. Over the weekend there was a Gears of War 3 LAN event. Uh... Hypefestation 3, obviously the last Hypefestation was like, the last proper numbered Hypefestation was like two years ago? Two and a half years ago? Yeah, that's, about that's that. right. Yeah. So it was January that's what, that's what of, yeah, J January 2012? I think that's right. Um, and then of course there was Winter Brawl 8 recently, which was Hypefestation sponsored uh, and kind of tagged along with the name branding, but it was the first kind of proper Gears 3 LAN tournament in quite a while. Um, it was pretty good turnout. They had 17 teams come out to Indiana, which isn't really a central location at all for the Gears community. Um, obviously, there were teams out there. We actually used to work at Ebash, Kale and I, and yep. can regularly drove out there in our Gears 1 days to play in 32-team tournaments all the time, double ELM. Um, but given that there hasn't been any other tournament activity, really, for Gears 3, I thought the 17 teams was pretty damn good. Um, they also had a couple people from Black Tusk out there doing Q and A's, and Black Tusk actually contributed three thousand dollars to the pot. Um, so all in all, like those were all positive notes for the tournament, which I thought um, were quite good. And that's really all I got for the positive notes. And I am trying, like, let me just say it this way: I'm not hating on anybody. <laughs> I'm saying everything I say in the next twenty minutes or whatever. Strictly hey, look, to try look. to improve shit. Tell them, just word it like this, right? These dudes are experienced now and, and That's running streams. exactly it. All right? Uh, they, they have a known, um, you know, reputation for running streams. There's also a lot of competition with other streams. I think, I, I think it's safe to say we watch enough events in the scene to be critical of Gears of War or Call of Duty or whatever the fuck the stream is, regardless of who's producing it, if they want to, you know, show us... Uh, you know, not just us, but anyone watching that, you know, hey, w take us seriously. Yep. You know what I mean? So, And that's where I'm coming from. Um, a lot of the things which were wrong or were having issues with, I felt like were resolved or ha or were problems during Hype 2, and they just weren't really addressed for this event. Um, so anyways, go into it. Uh, the event was held at Ebash Indianapolis at a land center. Um, they have a really nice setup. I don't know if you Probably got to see... the best I've ever seen. Did you see it? Answer? I mean, it was something that when we worked at eBash, it was always something we were pushing. Like, we wanted to be right. able to do streaming tournaments and kind of doing more video content stuff like we do on the YouTube channel. Um, yep. But the time wasn't really right for it, realistically. Because uh, we were talking, like, 2009. Yeah, <laughs> we, we were, were ahead of our time, I think, with a lot of the things that we were suggesting for them to do. Yeah, so they had, like, a proper, like, broadcasting booth. Um, the setup for the event had, like, a nice little main stage thing where all eight monitors were reflected on these large Vizios so you could watch from the front. Um, I thought they could have had, like, a big projection screen or something for the, like, stream output, essentially. Would have been nice. Yeah. Um, yep. But, f like, all in all, for a land center, like, this is all stuff that no other land center has contributed to tournaments. So, really cool. Even the fighting game tournaments, like, they just kind of have their own little setup in the corner, usually. Uh, where they're just setting up a desk with a camera, you know, so like from that regard it was really nice venue They had like I imagine they probably had 30 some Xboxes based on when we worked at eBash before so the logistics of it All taken care of by eBash as far as I'm concerned What ended up happening? Um, this is my interpretation. I haven't seen any official debrief yet. Obviously the event just finished late on Sunday night, so It seems like they had issues with map pack scale Right. Do you remember the other tournament we had issues with map packs then? <laughs> Every single one. All of them? <laughs> All of them? Exactly. <laughs> and do you remember specifically what we what problem we had at Hype 2? Hype 2, the same thing. Do you like, remember the map? Do you remember the map? Yeah. It was yeah. Rustlong. Rustlong. 
which was he in the was series. up all night with them um, the night before the tournament, yep. trying to get that working. I remember specifically. Yeah. So they have the same problems, um, and as a result, they ended up playing on default eBash gamer tags the entire event. So all of the accounts were like eBash 003, eBash 004, eBash 005, etc. And people couldn't change them because they were live tags, uh, which sucks. Obviously, it absolutely sucks. And the event started off late, and they had issues with updates throughout the weekend. Um, the end result was that they ended up finishing a 17-team double elimination tournament, which took place over... They had three days to do it. They did started running matches on Friday um, for like uh, the 2v2s and that kind of stuff. So the players were there on Friday, and they finished at 5 a.m. on Monday morning, uh, right. which is astoundingly awful, considering that... <laughs> Kale and I worked at Evash. We went to Evash tournaments. When we, 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 when we played, we started tournaments at 11 a.m. with 32 teams. I think a few times, 33 or 34 teams. And, and finished finish them it. by like 2 a.m. Yeah. In one day. <laughs> Would you say they I have mean, we've, stations? We've run then? tournaments like this. More stations? Uh, we had like, it was like four or five stations to play matches with what Evash Terra Hode had. Yep. Yep. Um, so, I mean, we've run this before. I like... It's it's amazing to me that it took so long because you and I have run tournaments like from start to finish on a number of different games. When we first opened Bloomington um, and we started working there, like we did a Halo tournament that had like 50 teams show up and we still finished it in <laughs> in in like the course of 24 hours, like over a day, like a Saturday is the tournament. We finish it early Sunday morning, like, you know, 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m. So I, I just have no idea how they managed to run a three-day tournament with 17 teams and end up finishing that late. And there was, like, horrible, horrible downtime, according to a lot of other people that, that were watching. And I caught a little bit of it, but I didn't feel like it was too bad. No, it was, like, it was like, like 45 minutes to an hour between matches. Yeah. yeah like Five to ten minutes between maps sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's unacceptable. Um, and like warm up was usually like thirty minutes, uh, and you and I both know that events you have to cut people short on warm up, or else they'll just fucking sit there for hours. Um, right. So that's happened at every event. It happened at every event as well. Every yep. event, like we don't. How hard is it just put a timer there and say, "Hey, five minutes. That's it." They yep. let them play the full King of the Hill, the full twenty minutes, and you know that's that. I, I don't know, man. It's been it's been this way since two thousand eleven. Like we're still learning. Yeah. I don't understand that at all. And if the event was meant to showcase gears to like a and start building a like viewer audience, um, then to me the event failed miserably. Horribly. Um, base. I mean, not not even looking at the numbers. The numbers were actually okay. Like I was kind of impressed that we had 1,500 people at the peak. Um, I know that probably isn't crazy for most people, uh, based on like what we've done at previous hypes. Uh, but at this point in time, I think 1,500 was pretty damn good. Um, but it could have been higher if there wasn't such long delays between matches and maps. And if they played their best matches, which are the top four players, uh, the, the top four team matches, you know, like those are always the most exciting to watch usually. And the ones people tune in for, if those were played at a reasonable time and able to be promoted on Twitter and everything, then I think they would have easily broken 2,000 at least. Um, but instead it was like the finals had, there was like 700 people in stream. I think 500 of them were probably asleep. Exactly. Uh, by, I think the time, by the time the matches all. happened, like there was no way. There was like maybe twenty of us typing in chat by the time that the uh, finals happened at five a.m. Yeah, dude, I was I was knocked out. I was watching. Um, I watched a couple. Of, I watched. I wanted to watch uh, Glory and uh, uh, Vision. Why can't I think of them? No, Vision. I wanted to watch Glory, Vision, uh, Strang's team. I don't know why I can't think S-Y-N. of them. <laughs> yes, yeah, S Y N. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there was one other team I was looking at. Uh, is it NTR? Yeah, NTR, Notorious. Okay, Notorious. Um, and those are the four teams I was kind of watching. Uh, there was a couple other, you know, I, I, when, I saw the very beginning of when they, they showed the intros. Um, and then into that like uh, is where I started. I was like going back and forth. And then I went to sleep because <laughs> they had some downtime. And uh, I had my, my stream open. And, and so, uh, you know, there was nothing on for a while. Uh, and during it, that downtime, there was nothing. Like, right. it was so, absolutely nothing. And then I don't Barbosa know. kept putting the one song he had. <laughs> that awful <laughs> song. The Ice-T, Gears of War song. 
just that horrible <laughs> song. <laughs> he probably played it like fifty times over the weekend. He's played yeah, it that at was... the last event. Like it was. But the thing that sucks is like to me the event regressed pretty heavily in terms of like the the vibe, the general overall vibe of the stream. Um, like there were no listen-ins. You couldn't hear any of the banter between teams. Uh, you could be even barely hear it in the background. They didn't have any mic over there. Um, the default gamer tags hurt. They didn't do a lot of like they did some interviews and stuff and pulled different people back there, but not really. Um, Those interviews were to stall. I, and, yeah, it was always stalling. <laughs> like I don't know if you can like you can hear the team listeners, but I kid you not, I was hearing people like in the background like stall, stall. You gotta keep talking. You gotta keep talking. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I'm like, do you know we can hear you? <laughs> we can hear you saying all this stuff. And then they put they put nasty on the spot, and he like he was supposed to stall. He just got to like just like froze up for a second. I was like, oh jeez, come on, man. But yeah. my my biggest gripe with it, well, it was kind of two things. It was one that it was marketed as the biggest show, right? That's that's kind of how like they tried to push this to the players. And then two, this was our first impression with Black Tusk with the competitive scene. Like if they knew nothing about us, this is their first event they've ever seen. The first thing they've ever known about Gears of War. I think we left a bad impression. And we took their we took we took three thousand. We took three thousand from them. We had horrible downtimes. We had egregiously long warm-up times you couldn't see the player names uh just i i don't like i don't even know like what their thoughts of us are at this point well i mean talking you know i had a conversation with nick um yesterday and and uh you know that he was telling me that they were talking with some people there um so you know i think the people that went to the event might have a different impression of what was happening versus people that were watching the event. Um, that sometimes tends to happen. Uh, so, you know, they could have had a good time at, 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 at eBash. Um, but, you know, for viewership, I think it wasn't great. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I don't know what the perception of it was. But, I mean, Nick seemed like, um, it seemed like Black Tusk is, Black Tusk is very interested in um, the competitive scene. And I don't think their enthusiasm about growing competitive gears was uh, thwarted by this event. I think they definitely probably have some um, some issues they would like to critique. Like if you know if Jason were to say, "Hey, you know, I want to do gears uh, events in the future," they might say, "Hey, well, is this, this, and this going to happen at the next event that you do? If so, can you make sure that you you have those things fixed or better?" I think that that's the type of um, thing I would expect from them. I, I don't. I think the only thing that's kind of disappointing for me. Is like a game like um, Gears seems like it could get more viewers than 1,500 viewers. Considering Black Tusk was was a sponsor, they were probably promoting it a little bit. Um, at, at one point, I mean, I don't know if Epic uh, was talking about it, but I think they tweeted out the the hype uh, Winter Brawl, whatever, when that was a thing. Uh, but like, if you look at a game like um, what's that one in Brazil that's real popular, Colin? When you and I are always tripping out, Combat Arms, because they get like. Yeah, so Combat Arms is pretty. I mean, it's I want to say 2007, 2008 is when that came out. Probably better. And like yeah. the scene, the scene seems like it wouldn't be able to pull in, you know, these these uh, massive viewers. But when they hold a tournament, like they get six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think at one point I saw fifteen thousand people watching Combat Arms, and I'm like, really? You know, how are they doing this? And you know, I think some of the issues is like we're not. And when I say we, uh, the Gears of War community is not <laughs> specifically targeting um, areas where they should be. Um, and, you know, I saw kind of talking about it in chat. Like, Mexico is hot right now for Gears. I don't care what the fuck people have to say about playing against Mexican players or, or the, the, you know, the, the issues with that. But, you know, I feel like um, t targeting some of that specifically is going to help bolster the community. Like, they need to get people interested or that already are interested invested in watching and being a part of that that scene um because to in my opinion when you're getting beat out like gears of war is three years old it's a phenomenal game right four years old three four years old phenomenal game in my opinion there's no reason that you know for a tournament of this magnitude the only one in existence right now for gears that at the end of the day for a finals event again all things considered that they only have like you know fifteen hundred people watching. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't seem yeah. acceptable to me. Well, we lost two hundred viewers pretty much every time. You know, we had to switch not just matches but maps. 
like we every there was almost on like 20 i want to say 10 to 15 minute delay every time in between maps and during that time it was just you know looking at the uh the, the player cam not, not the player cam but really the audience cam like you're just sitting there watching the audience cam with the big hype three logo over it. it's like well you know and the gears I watch music this. Yeah. And the gears, not nah, worse than that. It was that, or, that, that all. Or you had the song, and you're yeah, like, please put the menu music back on. Like, yeah. yeah, please something else. It, muted. I'd rather hear nothing at this point than to have to listen to that. But it, it, was, it almost it, felt it, like it was produced in a vacuum of like what other tournaments are doing nowadays. I like, just, I just, yeah, it didn't really make sense to me. I just didn't understand. Like, this is the fifth land, you know, and the first one came down in 2011, like, and they had the Thursday, and I think. Yeah, I think some people came down on Thursday, but they for sure had the Friday. And I don't understand how we was, how they actually put up a 1v1. They put like one 1v1 between Ribs and Nasty up on that Friday, but didn't take the time to sort out all the issues that we know for a fact because they've been there at every single event since 2011. Like, why not just sort that out? And if it came down to DLC, you know, you could bring... You, it's not that... Flash Rush about five bucks, so you can have a couple of Flash drives and just bring the DLC and just boot it up through the Xbox. Or... Black Touch just gave us three thousand. We could we could have got some codes or something. Like it, it wouldn't have been that difficult to sort some of that, those issues out, especially going into the event where you know that you're going to have them. Yeah, I, 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 I just feel like surprised. it should have been tested. I mean, they did they they surveyed the place like a couple weeks before the event um, and did like the uh, walkthrough example, and that would have been a prime time to test it. And it's all like it's in hindsight, but at the same time, it's like. We've had these same <laughs> issues every time. You know what I mean? I don't so. think you can call it hindsight when you that's the when you've had it before. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like you know it's going to happen, but you just didn't, you know, prepare for it again. I, I don't know. It, it was it was pretty weird to me. Um, team wise, I mean, talking about that from that perspective, like you, you know, obviously synergy is always a team I like enjoying. I gotta like I don't want. To, to just talk about the event like was there matches that you guys enjoy watching was there you know some some key moments that you think were really important uh, Gl- uh glory versus vision in winner's bracket was a i think that was a great series just because like that that was the first i think that was the first match we actually got to see see from glory and the only thing we're hearing about well they, they're three on everybody they haven't given up a single point on king of the hill up to this point and then when the match started, they 4-0 vision, like, I want to say less than, less than seven minutes. Like, it was a clean sweep. And I made a, I made a quick meme with a meme about with Fallout's face, like, oh, my God, did that just happen? <laughs> it, that was probably, to me, that, for me, that was the best moment in the entire series. That was the match that had that back-and-forth uh, hotel execution, right? With, like, clutches left and right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty, yeah, it was pretty, pretty good. insane. I mean, it's really hard. Like, it's hard for me to pick out matches from the event because every match I watched had the e bash tags. So, like, if I wasn't paying really close attention, I couldn't tell who was even playing. Uh, like, who was which team? Uh, it was. It took a lot of focus just to be able to figure that out. It actually um, messed those up. Was I, was, I was talking to a toy soldier from. Um, I think yeah, he's from Glory, right? He was from Glory. He was saying like, yeah, some of the, a couple of those plays they got, they missed out. They say that was explosive, that was me, or they say I'm dead, but I'm still alive. I'm like, uh, yeah, like yeah, I don't. Yeah, they were working off a sheet that was just yeah. the tags versus players. Exactly. Um, so yeah, like there was definitely good plays and some decent matches. Um, it was just always so spaced out, and you couldn't really follow the match very well. Um, I couldn't imagine if you didn't un- if you didn't know the players personally. Um, or know the tags at least, then it probably would have just been completely meaningless to you, and you couldn't really pick a favorite player or like anyone to follow or anything. Um, so, oh, I would, from a viewer's perspective, it was really difficult. I was honestly picking out players just because I knew their play styles already. That was the only way I could differentiate you between knew which position could, they played. And yeah. yeah, I could like tell the way they, how they move around the map, and what, and what that's the one thing. Like we were all in sky chess, and we we're saying, okay, uh, like let's say for uh, TS, and we're like, okay, Poseidon's always bare. Uh, Nick Merce is Carmine. Like that's how, that's how. And no, Socrates is uh, Octane's is uh, Marcus. Like that's how we had to figure out who was playing playing who because we just knew their play style. If you didn't play with those guys before or scream against those guys before, you probably were just clueless. Like, you just knew that E Badge 104 was going off, and that was about it. All right. Uh, the one last thing I want to talk about, um, which is kind of like, <laughs> I know I hate it because I feel like I'm just like banging away on it. Like, let me point out, like, the fact that this event even happened uh, just blows my mind. It was due to so much dedication from people, um, which again is why. I, 
I'm so frustrated when there's all these production issues because it sucks for everyone involved. Um, but the last one was like a tournament admin decision. Um, they brought out the continuation rule out of nowhere, pretty much. Uh, the NTR and Vision had played in winner bracket. Vision had 3 0'd NTR and sent him into loser bracket. Uh, NTR went on this crazy loser bracket run, which culminated in them 3 0'ing Vision um, at like 2 a.m. in the morning again. Uh, so they 3 0'd Vision, and then everyone thought the match was over. The commentators had never mentioned anything about continuation. Uh, everyone thought it was standard double elimination tournament. You lose two series and you're out, right? Um, right. So it was never brought up. It was never mentioned. And then while well, NTR is celebrating, Vision throws a – like they start getting upset and they will say, hey, it's 3-3 because the continuation series. Uh, we still have three more maps to play or whatever in order to figure out who won the best of 11. Um, and then like it sounded like there was a big argument off screen. We couldn't actually hear anything. Uh, and then they came back with a decision that continuation rule was in effect – and that NCR had, quote, agreed to it, and we were okay playing it. Bullshit. My issue with that is that <laughs> if your tournament has an issue, and this is just a very blanket statement, which I feel is extremely true. If your tournament has an issue and it relies on a team agreeing to a rule, your tournament was run poorly. You failed to make rules before time. You failed to lay out everything in the print. You ultimately are making a team cave into peer pressure and like you end up forcing a team to make a decision that's against their uh best interest uh, yeah against their best interests and anytime you force a team to do that that is horrible tournament administration like it's just it's the, and these it's the single it's the cardinal sin um of tournament administration to me so ntr agreed they ended up losing the match um actually which was what sucked even more uh it went all the way to game 11 i think it was 3-3 and the last uh, execution, too, and they lost the last round. Um, so they ended up losing the series. To me, like, the fact that Haifa Station is in their third event now, and they don't have written down rules anywhere. They didn't for Hype 2, either. You remember that? There was no, like, packet or anything we got when we signed up or any rules on the website. They're now in their third event, and they still don't have written out tournament rules um, for how they handle all that stuff is mm -hmm. insane to me. And the mm. fact that they brought a continuation out of nowhere is also insane to me. So I didn't. Sorry, I Kale, didn't. I was gonna say I didn't. This is a part of the thing where I was in a lull when this happened, so I don't know what time this occurred, but I missed it. And then afterwards, I had to read about it, and and most of it was from I was reading your uh, feed, and I think you were, you know, Blaze had some stuff to say about it, and uh, you were kind of going back and forth with him, and so I was trying to catch up on Twitter about it. Like, I don't actually remember this rule um I, I vaguely i vaguely remember it but like it sucks that uh you know if you don't remember this from what is 2009 2009 when mlg events were happening 2009 when mlg events were were happening mind you like like is These this even a thing now anymore with mlg like they don't i don't even think they do that anymore no, they, they cut it out like two years ago they haven't so, done continuation look, for a couple of years if you're trying to point at fucking mlg as the the rule set for this at least have the the couth at least have the the respect to 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 use their updated rules instead of shit from 2009 <laughs> having to remember that shit and that's what my issue was it's like why the fuck are they bringing up shit from you know five six years ago when that and, and to, to my knowledge at the time when i was reading i was like I was kind of saying to myself, like, didn't MLG get rid of that shit? Why are they even, why is that even a thing? Like, that shouldn't have even been considered as an option in Vision. Should have just been like, all right, yo, we lost. But no, you know, they got the pride thing. They got, you know, these are known players. So, hey, you know, I, I get it. At the end of the day, I, get, I understand why they had controversy with it. But if you're going to sit there and point at MLG and say, hey, let's use this rule set. Like, use their fucking updated shit. Like, don't bring up shit from six years ago. That's bullshit. Flat out, bullshit. So yeah, I agree with you. That's that's very poor, poor. Uh, you know, tournament organization, and I'm very surprised that they they had the audacity to even uh, make that a consideration and force those dudes um, to 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 say, okay, yeah, we agree to play. Like, no, that's 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 stupid. It's it's worse when you take into account that um, that NTR was the I think 
was probably the youngest team there. Those were like players that are like, you know, 15, 16. I think Kyle was 18. I'm not sure how, this, how old Dispenser was. But these are young people. So when you bring up like these rules were used in 2009, like most of these kids were probably in, like still in middle school at that point. And they didn't even, they had no idea about these rules. And those things were never explained to them. They think double elimination. So, you know, it must be if you get if you get beat twice, you're out. And the argument that kept coming to me was, well, how is that fair? If they three out them in winners bracket and then say they three two them in losers bracket, do they are they really the best team? I'm like, dude, that doesn't matter. That's you, you can use that argument almost in any form of competition. It, what it comes down to is who was best at that moment. Like once you're not in the losers bracket, that you know you're fighting for your life and you know if you lose you're getting eliminated. And they like to bring up the fairness, but they don't ever like take into account that every other team at that event was bounced out in twice. And to me, if I'm in the audience and I see this team that just lost twice trying to argue to play a third time, I'm flipping out. I'm saying, hey, hold on, where's my third shot? It's a double elimination bracket, but they get to play. They have to get triple eliminated. Like, what, what kind of bullshit is that? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand that. And I was pretty angry that that you know people that have been going to land for years and years and years would actually you know, take that position against people that just got there and that could easily pressure them into doing something they want to do just to get it over with, you know? Because, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's a really shitty situation. Like, I didn't understand that at all. Was, like, that was just, that was, I have no words for that. It's double elimination. I don't see how you can argue against that. It's in the definition, it's standard. If you're going to say continuation or something, you have to add that in there and explicitly state that. You can't grind. You can't grandfather like old rules until a, tur- a tournament like you know five years later. Like it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I'm just surprised. Like, oh, just the way MLG used to do it back back in my day. <laughs> yeah, and despite the fact that how many years ago was that? There's no other game. There's no other league or game outside of MLG that has used those rules. Ever. So, like, yeah, ever. Like, I can't think of anything. There's not one modern game. Um, that and then they don't rules. do it anymore. And, so and MLG has since reneged on it as well. Um, and it doesn't really make sense either, like in the grand scheme of things, in my opinion. If you lose two series, you're out. Double elimination. Um, I think it's self explanatory. If you actually want to crush that precedent, I hate Winter Brawl 8. They had a similar situation where LOX had 3 0 to SYN in winner's bracket, and then they had to play, play, play each other again in losers, and SYN 3 0 them. They didn't get a continuation. That was just it. They stuck. They stuck to the uh, simple double elimination rules, and they got. And they were, you know, right. it, it was time for them to go home. So if someone wants to like bring in that MLG thing, it's like why didn't you use the MLG rules at, at your last event? Like, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a shitty situation. Anyways, I want to wrap it up. Um, Blaze, I see you in chat. I'm sorry, but I really don't see any other side of the argument. Like really, I just don't see it at all. Um, Feel free to tweet or explain it. I'll retweet if something you say actually makes me reconsider the position. But to me, like, there's no debate, and I don't want to be sitting here talking Gears and High Station for the next 20 minutes. Um, so that's that. All right, so thanks for joining us, uh, Rabbit. And oh, wait, wait. One thing oh, one, before you sign off. Rab, I got to tell you, nice job on the forums. I've been silently reading. Again, I get too much flack on there, so I stay away. <laughs> but nice job organizing competitive stuff. I think you needed a lot more recognition than what you got in, in the in the chat and in, in the in the, generally in the community for your efforts on on the forums and stuff. Uh, getting you know Black Tusk aware of what's going on and trying to get up to speed. So uh, I had to give you some credit on the show. I appreciate that. That's like one of the few. T- <laughs> believe it or not, that's one of the few times I actually you know get a get a little like you know gratitude. But you know I appreciate that a lot. Hashtag All right, guys. Blame Rabbit. Hashtag. It was funny to see those hashtag remod, hashtag mod rabbit, and I'll just see you hashtag Blame Rabbit. She goes down, <laughs> Blame Rabbit. Map delay, Blame Rabbit. <laughs> just reflecting it, man. We've been seeing it for ages. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, man. All right, man. Appreciate it. Um. So last thing on my docket for today. Today is just esports show. Evo. 2014. Evo. Did you get to look at these numbers? Evo. Uh, so, not really. <laughs> I, I just, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I kind of saw people talking about it, right? Like, and then, you know, in your document, um, 
I, I read about it. You know, the, the numbers. I mean, it, it's insane, dude. That's crazy. 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 So, hey, let me just drop this in chat. I'm going to drop two links in chat, and we're going to talk about each of them. Um, both are from SRK. <laughs> Blaze says the debate's always good. This ain't frag lot. Or this, this ain't active reload. <laughs> <laughs> Be here for an hour debating gears. Two thousand players register for Street Fighter Four. Woo! Two thousand players, and they're gonna have, and they're gonna finish that shit in one weekend and not be finishing at five a.m. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna finish those two thousand players in one weekend. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Link number two. Boom. International presence. 800 people traveling from outside the U.S. 127 people flying from Japan to come wreck, to come wreck everything. This is going to be the, uh, what is it? It's probably going to be Japan, like, what, top 10? <laughs> <laughs> Man. I don't know if it's going to be that. that Japan's going to be fierce. Japan yeah. is going to be fierce. I'm Japan's actually really excited to watch. I wanted to go, but like I just have too much shit going on right now. Um, you know, apparently last year uh, uh, there was like eight people from Epic that went. So yeah, you know, I guess it's cool. a thing. Go out to the Mecca. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's two thousand for Street Fighter, one thousand for Marvel, one thousand for Smash. Uh, which is pretty damn impressive. They're on a big upswing after the E3 stuff and the new Smash game coming out. Um, uh, I was kind of disappointed in the attendance for the other ones. Um, obviously, 500 for Blaz Blue is really good. Um, 330 for Killer Instinct seems low. 300 for Injustice seems low. And maybe they just seem low in comparison to 2,000 players for Street Fighter. M maybe that's the only reason. Yeah, I mean it's 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 pretty ridiculous to uh, to see that I you know having that number of uh, players across the board for so many other games I think is really uh, critical in and you know analyzing the 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 growth of the fighting game community and I think you know if you kind of look at Twitch I think Twitch has really helped them you know what I mean like oh I'm just, sure like talking about those guys kill it man like talking about community building and like production and like building a community based around that shit those guys kill it every week every week every week there's tournaments and yep. streams and like clockwork production levels like just gotten better and better every single year for the last like five years um on twitch so like they are absolutely beasting it over there on the mostly west coast but even like there's midwest events now there's east coast events now like it started to spread and they're all doing regular stuff streaming regularly same weeknight same time. Yep. Insane. Like, it's, it's crazy. And then when you get I, the big I, daddy, you get 2,000 people come out for one game. Yep. yep. Paying $50 a pass. $50 a pass, Kale. <laughs> and that's not even counting people who go out there to spectate. Yeah, it's going to be insane, dude. They, they got $20,000 just off entrance for one game. <laughs> not even counting the crazy viewership it's going to get. What it, uh, Evo last year was 100k uh, for like multiple streams. It was like 100,000 people watching Smash, 100,000, almost 150,000 people watching Street Fighter. I mean, it was crazy last year, so I can only imagine how big it's going to be this year in terms of viewership. And you know what really helps this is like when you get international people into the scene, and Dota was a perfect example for me, or League. I've seen this like you get you get a lot of people like that country pride it's kind of like soccer in a way you know we get this craze oh, yeah. this this uh football fever that 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 comes over people like when you get there's that top a lot eight, of there's spikes next pride to your name. comes into effect yeah i mean it's like people want to watch um the people from their country and so you get more viewers that weren't wouldn't normally watch internationally and i think that's really important so I can't wait to see uh, how big this is because this that's just those numbers are crazy. Yeah. Like crazy. Drazy says, when is this? So here's the crazy thing. This is next weekend, the eleventh to the thirteenth. 
You know what's crazy? That next weekend is the International. <laughs> yeah. It goes Evo and then International. And they'll be doing Evo and they'll be doing international qualifier matches all week next week. So like basically you'll have them going side by side at the same time. Esports blowing up on Twitch over the next yep. couple weeks. Yep. It's going to be insane. It's gonna be absolutely insane. And you guys should all be watching both of those events. Seriously. Even if you don't play those games, like you should check out the events and be like, okay, this is where I want my game to get, or this is where I want to be competing, or this is where I want to be spectating, or like this is something I want to get involved in and get to. Like that's why this stuff gets me so fucking hyped as a fan of esports and competitive gaming. What's up, Kona, and everybody in chat? I can see the chat, but I have to like look at my phone. I'm using uh, the split feature on my uh, note. <laughs> 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 it's so ghetto how I have You're this lucky you even right have that now. feature because on iOS you're pretty screwed. Yeah. So, what's up, guys? Uh, I haven't been really talking to the chat, but like I saw a couple people in there um, just because the way I had to run the show today. So, um, oh, I got a picture I'm going to post on Twitter and a little bit of, of this July 4th stuff, my daughter. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, Colin, like esports right now. Um, is probably it's some of the best stuff like we've got to see in the last like you know four or five years like this i say the last two years have been like crazy crazy now, could you imagine for, even like uh, a year and a half ago me saying there'd be a 10 million dollar tournament million dollar funded tournament. by the community or that sounds, there'd be a tournament crazy. with two thousand entrants that sounds crazy like i had to rack my brain to think if there was even any sport that runs tournaments like that live like could you imagine a tennis tournament with 2,000 players? Or like a golf tournament with 2,000 players? Can you imagine if Evo said, hey, you know what? We're only going to let uh, 16 people play. Yeah, you know what? Fighter, we, have these, we have these 12 uh, really good players. We're going to support them. You can get in uh, every year at Evo. You can join the 128-team open bracket. Yes, sorry your country didn't make it in. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, it's absolutely you know, insane. You can try again Open next. registration, and they just, they just deal with it. You know, it's like we have to run... They're probably gonna have three or four of these tournaments going on at once, for a total of like four thousand players through brackets. Yep. Plus, you're gonna have crazy ass seating area for all those spectators. Like it's gonna be madness. But they're stepping up. This is the direction I want esports to go. This and international, like those are two great examples to me. International had a lot of drama this week, uh, based around a player. You probably saw articles about it on Polygon. I don't know if you saw. Uh, but it actually got some news. Yeah, esports uh, esports roster thing got news coverage on gaming sites. Yeah. Um, so the one of the players on um, shit. Why am I drawing a biggest blank right now? One of the players on Fnatic um, has been having some anxiety issues uh, recently, so he hasn't been playing. They've been using a stand-in for the last few months. Um, he got. So what they did was they wanted to use the stand-in at the International, so they sent an email to Valve, were like, hey, Era's not feeling very well, he has uh, some medical problems with anxiety, he actually was like having trouble traveling and that kind of thing. Um, so they said, hey, like we might need to use the stand-in, um, just a heads up. Uh, and then Era, who was the player involved, he sent an email to Valve on the 7th of last month and said, hey... Fanatic's trying to like push me off the roster here. I'm good to go. The doctor cleared me, um, and then he gave like documentation and stuff. He's like, I want to play. Um, is there anything you guys can do? So Valve, of course, defended the player very vehemently and was like, hey, you guys have to play with the team we invited. We invited these players. Essentially said, we invited these players, these five players. We didn't invite Fnatic. Like, you need to play with these five players or you don't play at all, was essentially what uh, Valve told Fnatic. Um, and then on the 11th, Fnatic came back and basically came back with, Hey, hey, Era said that it's okay that we can um, go forward without him. Uh, we talked with him. We talked over the team. Um, said that's fine. Era sent an email to Valve saying, Hey, um, it was like really weirdly worded. It was, yeah, I'm okay with him being standing, I guess. Uh, it's the best for the team um, after we talked it over. Uh, and... The doctor said, I'm not clear, or something like that. Um, but Valve already was, like, super suspicious of the scenario, thinking that, like, they were just kind of strong-arming Era into stepping out of the tournament. 
So right. Valve is still defending Era, and they won't let him play with the stand-in. So they're going to have to switch back to the team that they haven't practiced with in like two or three months, which is the reason that it's really a tough decision from like a team standpoint um, to play with the guy, which sucks because Fnatic is the team that stayed together. Like Fnatic is the equivalent of ZYN or VBI. Um, they've had the right. same roster for like three years, pretty much. Uh, three or four years, which is a long time for Dota. Um, so the whole situation sucks horrendously. Um, but Valve was protecting the players versus protecting the organization or the team. Uh, I thought it was a nice contrast to the whole MLG thing we talked about earlier. Right. Interesting. Anyways, Evo International, the next couple of weeks, it is going to be crazy for esports. And it was nice to be able to talk about esports for a show on Frag Logic. Uh, we don't usually get to cover it all the time. Evo. Agreed. Very, very much so. Gonna be hype. All right. And I don't have anything else, so we can go to Q&A and chat. Um, if anyone wants to throw stuff out there. Anything to your heart's desire. I had a... Uh, let see. Was it Rickster? I think was uh, his tag in chat. I can't scroll up on these areas. Rickster? He uh, said thank you for uh, a Halo 4 calendar that I had signed. There's a funny story behind that. You signed a Halo 4 calendar? I signed a Halo 4 calendar at Christmas um, because my grandma, uh, I think you met her. I can't remember if you met her or just my great-grandma. Um, yeah, you met my grandma. Yeah. While we were down there. Um, stayed at, we stayed, stayed there for an event. We stayed at my great-grandma's house, uh, who passed away, unfortunately. But my grandma is her hairdresser is the mother of Rickster, who's in chat right now. Um, and I guess at some point my grandma had mentioned that I played games competitively and such and such. Um, and uh, it was connected that Rickster was a like fan of the team and watched the show and all that stuff. Uh, so she came up during Christmas. I was like, oh, cool. You know, like, that's neat. Uh, so she came up during Christmas with the calendar. like, hey, could you sign this for uh, my hairdresser's son? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, that's wow. a kind of... Uh, really weird requests like we aren't that known you know what i mean like so yeah that's a really weird connection to happen in the first place um and i haven't signed things for very many people so that was pretty funny uh, but he actually just said in chat earlier during the show uh thanks for signing my calendar <laughs> nice really weird connection to make it's Do like that think... <laughs> like that time i got beat by you on uh wsvg um oh and it aired on tv and then someone came into work the next day and recognized me Right, as the guy yeah. who got as the guy who got beat up by the black guy is what he said. <laughs> like, oh yeah, you're that guy who got beat up by the black guy in Fight Night. <laughs> but he didn't say in Fight Night. He just said beat up by the black guy. And I had to think about like, what is he talking about? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I guess I did. I did get beat up by the black guy. And like, <laughs> and kind of had to like matter like he was my teammate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. If you guys haven't seen it, there's footage floating around on the internet still. Um, but they had us like stand in a ring and do stare downs and everything, and then play in the middle of a ring, standing up, staring down at screens for fight night. Yep. Too funny. That was my biggest fame moment. Was the guy walking into my job and recognizing me? All right, Q and A. Someone said, do, you th what it, the, do we think the Gears of War 4 storyline is going to be good? Probably. Maybe <laughs> so. It's hard to say. We famous now? We yes, famous sir. Now? <laughs> that video is a classic. Any predictions for TI4? Newbie, just, DK, yeah. and IG, top three. All Chinese, top three. Uh, EG, fourth. Alliance, fifth. Navi, sixth. And that's as far as I'll go. Uh, Fnatic, seven. And then maybe Cloud9 makes the top eight. Um, but I'm expecting the Chinese teams to be very strong this event. Just because no team has been consistent, and the Chinese teams are usually the best at being consistent. And group stage is super important now. They're eliminating teams during group stage this year. Ooh. Yeah. Um, 
I don't really have predictions right now because I don't know enough of the You got to catch up on the scene, man. I only know Nabi and uh, Alain. You should cheer for Fnatic, honestly. Like, I mean, I know the, I know Fnatic. Uh, I know Cloud9. I mean, you know Fnatic. Uh, you enjoy Fnatic's CS team. Uh, yeah. They um, have the most similarities to us across the board as far as the way we play. And they do some crazy picks. It's pretty strategy heavy. Or Navi. I mean, I'm a Navi fan, personally. Uh, but they're looking pretty bad this year. Uh, when am I going to stream some games again? Um, when my setup is in place. Uh, I think, you know, I need to get a new desk. Um, I have to get another monitor. Um, so, I mean, there's a couple things that I have to get. You know, I think I need to buy a new chair. So, I, I don't know when I'll be streaming like in full force, but you know, I'll be I'll be doing some stuff um, soon. What game is ZOM playing to make a competitive run in? Nothing currently. We're big on Titanfall, but uh, it doesn't. It's not going anywhere. Sucks. Nope. Sucks. It was fun playing in some of those uh, tournaments. Yep. Watching, getting people excited to watch us. When's the setup going to be done, Kale? When's the setup going to be done? Probably the end of the month. Middle, mid, mid, mid to the end of the month. Did you watch the World Cup game today, by the way? I know, I know USA wa uh, lost in, in uh, overtime. Didn't catch it, though? No. We were all not working. Watching game. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody was doing at the studio. I was working. Everyone else, I can't watch uh, football. I can only watch World Cup just because I'm slightly invested in it. Oh, I can't watch. But U.S. got pummeled pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, I want to play some Titanfall with the new update. Check out that matchmaking. Hopefully, they've resolved some issues. I, j I just want to play on a nice setup. That's all. Man, you gotta get that shit done. I'm trying, man. I can't help the things are late. You could. You could technically go drive and get them. <laughs> I I could go drive <laughs> 20 no... 26 hours. <laughs> there is no back can't. To Texas. There is no can't. Only try. Right. <clears throat> Arctic face cam, you've changed. He's on a phone. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the phone this week. Yeah, you're going to be on the same PC and tower once it gets over it. Uh, yeah. Did you change your CPU? I didn't, Pot. I didn't change it yet. All right. I think we can go ahead and wrap it up. Next week will be 75. 70, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that will be halfway through the year. 75. Yep. Basically. Well, I think we're already exactly, halfway through uh, the year. Yeah, we're already halfway. Because yeah. it's, a, what is it, 102? And it's July 1st. <laughs> so uh, we're going to close it out. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Um... I don't know what we're talking about next week. The week after that, we'll be talking Evo. The week after that, we'll be talking TI. But I don't know about next week. So uh, if you guys have any topics come up during the week, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm always checking that stuff, at Skyzen. Uh, KL is at Arctic, just like the Twitter or the Twitch. Um, so I'm going to sign up. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. Yep, later, guys.